Is Digital Turbine a good investment? Let's run through the bear and bull case to find out. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Brian, for those that don't know, what does Digital Turbine do? Well, before we went through it, we were among those who really didn't know. But what we've discovered is, is that that first slice that you see on the left is what Digital Turbine used to focus on. It's its legacy core business, which is basically pre-installing apps onto mobile phones. And when someone gets that mobile phone and starts it up the first time, it might ask them a bunch of questions and based on their interest, it will pre-install those apps. Now, as you might imagine, that could be pretty lucrative, but it was a one-off business. There was pretty much one-time recurring revenue. Over the past year, because of a series of acquisitions, it has completely transformed. Whereas it used to be one-off, it is now has recurring revenue and it has set up a platform for mobile advertising, which has both supply and demand side. So this business has completely transformed. And if you look at the company's scale, just four or five years ago, they were only installed on about 10 or 15 million devices. This number has grown consistently over the last few years, and they are currently now installed on almost 600 million Android devices. That is a huge po- that is a huge pool of mobile phone users that is likely highly attractive if you're an advertiser and you want to advertise on a phone or install an app on a phone. And that's a good point, too. This is Android phones, not Apple phones. But one of the key products that they have is this thing called single tap installs. Why is that so important? Because if I'm on my mobile phone and I see an advertisement for an app that I might want to get, like, let's say Headspace, I use Headspace a bunch. Instead of going to the Google Play Store, searching for Headspace, clicking on it, reading the reviews, hitting download and install, What this does is it just allows me to click on Headspace ad and it automatically downloads onto my phone. As you might imagine, that is a huge feature for companies that want to get their apps on people's mobile devices. Having the ability to not only show an advertisement, but then click one button and get the app installed. Is that something that you would pay for? I certainly would if I was an app developer. And the answer to that question is clearly yes. This company was growing rapidly prior to the last fiscal years. However, these acquisitions have proven to be game-changing for the company. Not only did revenue go berserk and is growing at a triple-digit rate, but the company is also producing profits on both an adjusted EBITDA basis as well as a non-GAAP earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis. So this company is not only growing fast, it's doing so with a profit. So what's the bull case here? Well, first of all, Bill Stone is not the founder of Digital Turbine, but he's basically created Digital Turbine 2.0 or someone even say 3.0, and he's created a solid culture as evidenced by Glassdoor reviews. Second, there are very strong macro trends pushing this company forward. Mobile advertising is a huge category, and there's still lots of dollars that still need to be transitioned to mobile advertising. Third, the company's sales and marketing spend is actually quite small compared to their gross profit which means that they can grow without spending tons of money on sales and marketing. Fourth, there are a number of different moats that are at play that are that are widening around this company. There are network effects involved with building a buy and sell side platform for mobile advertising. There are switching costs involved once mobile carriers start using this or once advertisers start plugging in this technology into their companies. And there is a patent for that single tap feature, which is really important, at least for now. It's the only company who can offer that. Fifth, I just like the narrative of this company. It's a Roku-esque pivot, whereas Roku used to have a one-off purchase of a dongle that you plug into a TV. Digital Turbine did the same thing with their uh, pre-installments of apps on the phones, but they've transitioned to become an advertising platform, and we see how well that's worked out for Roku. And sixth, this company is free cash flow and earnings positive, which is impressive and important because that means that they should be able to fund a lot of their development moving forward. Bullcase sounds pretty darn strong, and the company's growth rate have been impressive. So what can go wrong? First off, this company's balance sheet, we did not love. Not only is there a lot of goodwill on there, which makes sense given all the acquisitions, but it had a lot of long-term debt and not a ton of cash by comparison. So far, the company has had no problems dealing with that balance sheet, but that is something for investors to watch. 
Two, there are some concentration risks that investors need to keep in mind. It, ha it sells into several of the large mobile phone carriers as well as the original equipment manufacturers. So it does get revenue from a few sources. Now, this risk has remarkably gone down over the last year, and those acquisitions have helped, but it's still there, and it is something for investors to watch. Three, this company has primarily grown by acquisition over the last couple of years. It's made three really big acquisitions, and integrating those acquisitions is not always a given. That is going to be something for investors to watch moving forward. Finally, this company has a weird relationship with Google. It is very dependent on the Android platform, and its single, single installation button is a game-changing feature that allows you to bypass the Google Play Store. What happens if Google all of a sudden decides that it doesn't want to allow that? That could be a major blow to this company. So is Digital Turbine investable for us? Well, on my checklist, this was unbelievably close to the investable mark. This could have easily gone one, one way or the other. There were a few things that I didn't like, and it came out in my why bother category, but man, is this close to being investable for me. And for me, it was pretty much the same thing. I just came down right on the other side of that line to land in the yellow of this being investable. This is clearly a stock that has done very well, and it's not surprising. For me, the biggest drawbacks were the upside down balance sheet and the risk that that Google relationship does play in, in moving forward. Yeah, this isn't in my portfolio. However, if somebody came to me and said, I own Digital Tyburn, I would certainly say, I understand why. So what should investors watch moving forward? One would be the amount of recurring revenue that this company captures. Those business, those acquisitions that this company's made promise to seriously increase the amount of recurring revenue that this company gets. Hopefully that becomes the lion's share of revenue as we move forward. Two, the company's balance sheet. As we said, we are not thrilled with the current makeup of the company's balance sheet, but it is producing free cash flow and profits at this point. Can it use those profits to improve its balance sheet over time? Three, the concentration risk. As this company continues to grow and diversify its business, we want to see that concentration risk going down over time. It's been doing that brilliantly over the last couple of years, and we want to make sure that that continues to happen. Finally, it would just be its relationship with Google. If it's if it severed its relationship with Google and the Android platform for whatever reason, that would be thesis busting for this company. So you want to make sure that that relationship remains in place. Brian, Digital Turbine is a fascinating business and it is growing fastly and profitably. I totally understand why this company has captured the attention of investors. Absolutely. It's created un incredible returns over the past year, and I wouldn't be surprised to see continue. It is that risk with Google and the balance sheet that investors need to keep their eye on moving forward. For sure. This is a fun company to research. And if you want to watch us go through the entire research process, uh, click the link on your screen and we'll take you to a video that shows the hour long process. Thanks so much for watching. Brian, we'll see you next time. See you next time.